Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And today we're going to be choosing a rugby championship team of the tournament. It's always a fun exercise, always a bit of a controversial one as well with regards to who gets in, who doesn't, uh, what changes would you make, for example, can you try and fit all the different nations in or do you have to sort of leave some of them out? And uh, I'm always interested to see what everybody else has to say and what your team of the tournament would be. So uh, in the comments below, I want to let you know or let me know rather who your team of the tournament is, what changes you would make to mine, as well as who your player of the rugby championship was. I want to talk about mine, for example, and uh, sort of go through the picks one through to fifty and explain my thinking and some of the players who uh, potentially, but you know, were unlucky to to miss out. Before I do that, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Now, obviously, given the fact that South Africa won the rugby championship, you think they're going to have the most players in the team, and they do. Um, Argentina, their best ever rugby championship campaign, also featured quite strongly. And then a couple of All Blacks players scattered in and amongst. Unfortunately, you found it very, very tough to find space for any Australian players. And as a result, none do make the cut. Uh, some good moments. I feel like Fraser McGrath, for example, if he had played a full uh, rugby championship, probably could have been knocking on the door. I thought Jake Gordon had some nice moments. Uh, you know, I thought the locks were kind of getting there. But in general, just no sort of system performance. Maybe Harry Wilson, for example, Rob Lanatini, very hard done by. But so many good loose forwards in the rugby championship. So this is what I've got with my team of the tournament. Now, I'm going to start with my player of the tournament. He's on screen there, Peter Steph the Toy. He's just an absolute phenom. The work rate, the, the energy, the pace, the, the physicality he brings. I personally think that he's going to walk the World Player of the Year this year. I don't think there's anybody around the world that's playing as consistently at a high level as he has done this year at international rugby. He hasn't had a bad game. He's a man of the match in almost sort of every single game in terms of a nomin like possible nominations. When we do our player ratings, for example, he's always featured. And uh, he's just playing better and better and getting better. Aging like a fine wine is Peter Steph the toy after those initially early sort of uh, injury concerns in his career. Now look what he's having going. But let's go through this, shall we? So in the front row, I've gone with Ox and Che. I personally think that he, uh, a lot of people are talking about it, could be in the running to maybe get a shock you know, World Player of the Year sort of a nomination. He's just been incredible this year. Probably the best scrummager in world rugby right now. Uh, very good in the loose, gets through a lot of hard work. And just as the impact on this type of play, he, he, you know, he's caused you points, not through tries, but just scrum penalties, scrum dominance, for example. He's, 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 he's phenomenal. Uh, equally, I was very impressed with Cody Taylor this year. And it was always going to be interesting. Dan Cole's moving on. No, um, uh, um, uh, uh, so, so, so looking for the next generation, really, there. Uh, and I thought Cody Taylor really sort of stepped up. Uh, not necessarily the next generation, but he's kind of sort of been in and out of the mix a lot over the, over the years. And I thought that uh, during the Rugby Championship, he was just so impressive. Carried really well. Was a big part of, of the of the team. And uh, I think it's really sort of growing into the leadership role that he's kind of being given. And I've been very impressed with the improvement from Tyrell Lomax, who I think is really anchoring that All Blacks scrum. I thought Prasco Hoever... Very, always very unlucky to get in there uh, and could very easily have put him in there. I don't think too many people would have complained, but I was very impressed with what I saw from Tyra Lomax, both in the scrum perspective as well in the loose. A couple of turnovers, get around the park, a couple of nice uh, carries, tackles. Very impressive player. The other combination I've got with Ibn Etzebeth and Tupo Vi. Tupo Vi, I think, will be one of the few very big positives for Scott Robertson in the rugby championship. Uh, really stepped up and, uh, you know, to try and fill the boots of a, a Sam White and Brady Taylor partnership is always going to be a big ask. But I do think the Scott Barrett and Tupo Vi partnership, if Tupo Vi continues playing at this level, um, will we'll hopefully be a pretty decent replacement for that. Uh, Eben, for example, I mean, what's there to talk about? You're one of the greatest blocks of all time, one of the greatest spring blocks of all time, became the most cat spring block ever over the weekend, and another great tournament from him. Luz Chur, always going to be a very uh, controversial one, because I've left out Artie Sevier, I've left out Wallace Titi, I've left out uh, Pablo Matera, I've left out uh, Marcus Kramer, I've left out Sia Khaleesi, I've left out Fraser McGrath, Bob Valentini, there are so many good players. The problem is loose forwards are always players who are right in front of you. You know, they, they carry a lot, they carry in the fringes as well. They often make line breaks, they're involved in such important aspects of the game that they're very apparent. Um, you know, somebody like a... Um, and Matthew Visa, I thought, was also pretty good when he came back. Albert Lowe was very good off the bench. Uh, so I've gone with Kaka Smith, Peter Steph, the toy, and Jean-Martin Gonzalez. Uh, John Martin Gonzalez plays across the back three, so I could have had him at six. Quaker eight, for example, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I've gone with Quaker. I just, I mean, he's not actually a starter, but so good off the bench. Probably one of the best impact players um, we've ever seen, really, in a box jersey. And another really strong tournament. Once to revert back to sort of that bench role, continues to bring that impact. And as a result, I'm putting him in there. Pierce at the toy. Enough said. 
And then John Martin Gonzalez, special, special player, part of a very special group of Argentinian players. Uh, the halfback pairing, I've got with Cortes Ratima. It was quite an interesting one because not a lot of nines play consistently throughout the rugby championship. Tibet Perinar was the preferred uh, starter for the, for the beginning and then kind of it swapped. Uh, Jaden Hendricks, uh, Grant Williams, Kubus Reinach all started. Amorne van Berg all started for the box. That's four different scrum offs, so difficult from a game time perspective. I do think Jaden Hendricks probably was the best out of all of them. Similarly, we saw with Argentina. We saw a bit of uh, Alberto, we saw Gonzalo Garcia. Even with Australia, we had Nick White coming in, Jake Gordon coming in. So I think that Corti Duratum is somebody who really stepped up during the, the rugby championship. And uh, the number 10, also an interesting one. You know, I thought David McKenzie, sometimes the criticism against him was maybe a bit unfair. You know, Conte Poe had a couple of solid games. That's fine. Gomez Zulu looked very good against Australia. But uh, I think Thomas Alvinor, was, he's been at the heart of what is really, really exciting Argentina side. And uh, I think he deserves his, his, his credit where credit is due. So uh, very, very excited to see. I'm uh, very keen to watch him more in the URC. Uh, he's a tremendous player. If you look at the back three, uh, it was a difficult one. Kurt Lawrence is always going to sort of be around there, but I don't think he's had the best couple of games. Will Jordan, even Will Jordan now, is always going to be a big call. I thought Tom Wright with ball in hand was pretty good for Australia. Matteo Carreras for, for Argentina, fantastic player. Jean Cruz Manley is always exciting. So I've gone with Caleb Clark, who was the, the, the highest try scorer of the rugby championship. Back and looking really good for, for the All Blacks. Um, and then I've got the Chesney Colby. I mean, just what a player. Another fantastic game this weekend. You know, he's a player that. You, you're one of the first players on the team sheet in a very good Springbok side. And I believe the Pasu, I think, uh, has really secured that number 15 spot. Uh, Willie really, really would, have, would have thought about probably even notching it more. Caps throughout the rugby championship. Didn't manage it, and that's because of the form shown by, by Fassi. And then the centre pairing, I mean, I would, David Delaney for me, still the best number 12 in the world. Um, I thought Angela Leonard Brown added a whole new dimension to that New Zealand side when he started playing a bit more. I thought that if you look at the centers from World Beast, for example, in Iqatar, Hunter Basami got a little bit better as the, the rugby championship went in. But I've got a chance to tell you that is classy, classy operator. Very, very useful in that Argentina side and uh, at the heart of a lot of good things. That combination with the Albanos is going to be exciting one to watch. And I've got just a cool outside center. Uh, Argentina kind of sort of Maspiroli was there, for example. We saw a bit of Lucia Cinti there, very exciting player. Rico Awani moved around a little bit. Um, but I thought this was probably just the most consistent performer at outside center. And so that's my, my lineup. So what would you change? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.